five robotic surgery stocks are the topic of today's presentation. In order to come up with a list of all robotic surgery stocks out there, what we can do is uh, look at one of the artifacts that we make available to our premium subscribers. So if you're somebody who's paying our bills, what you can do is click the premium content button on our website. This is for annual subscribers. And then you can download the Nanolyze Disruptive Tech Stock Catalog. That contains over 460 stocks. There's a lot of rich data in there, uh, quite a few fields, one being a field called subcategory. And when you filter on that for healthcare robotics stocks, you'll get this list of names. Now, we want to refine this a bit further. For example, we'd want to remove Omnicell. They actually build automation, automation solutions for pharmacies, a couple other names we'd want to remove as well. That's because we're only looking for companies that dabble in robotic surgery platforms. So there aren't any solutions today that are fully automated. So there will always be a human surgeon in the loop, but uh, these are now being used more and more because they uh, help to minimize complications, they result in a better patient experience, they help reduce costs, and of course there's upfront costs involved in these platforms, but once you get them going, uh, they have great outcomes and they're used for a variety of different applications as you can see here. So the last time we checked in with robotic surgery stocks was uh, just over three years ago in this piece titled Six Robotic Surgery Stocks for Retail Investors. Now what we're going to do is take that list of 13. We're going to remove anything under a $100 million market cap. Now, we don't invest under a billion dollar market cap, but we will uh, cover companies below that number, though anything that's uh, under a $100 million market cap is just too small to even consider. Um, we'll then filter out companies that aren't dabbling in surgical robots, and what we're left with are six names. Now, one of these actually had a SPAC that fell through. That was Memic Innovative. So we're left with Intuitive Surgical, Procept Biorobotics, Accuray, Globus Medical, and Stereotaxis. So let's start with the smallest. This is a great chart in the Stereotaxis deck that shows the evolution of surgery. So uh, surgeries first started with open surgeries. That's what we're probably all visualizing when we think about surgery. That's a surgeon cutting open a patient, thus the name open surgery. And you can see the companies dabbling there, Stryker, medical devices firm, Medtronic as well. And they have, between the two of them, about 1,700 installed systems doing about 110,000 procedures a year. Uh, compare that to Intuitive Surgical, which does laparoscopic surgeries. They have uh, about 7,700 installed systems, and they did 1.2 million procedures last year. You also have J&J, &J, uh, which is doing some work, though they're uh, running into issues. We'll talk about that in a bit. And then you have stereotaxis with their endovascular surgery tools. Now, if you're going to sell robotic surgery equipment, we expect at a minimum to see revenue growth over time. This is not the chart that you want to see if you're selling something that's supposed to be disrupting uh, the surgical industry. So uh, you can see here that uh, along the top, we've listed out their operating cash flows, which are negative over the past trailing 12 months. They lost about $11 million. So with $28 million in cash in their books, they have about 2.5 years of runway. Uh, the stock price is, um, seems to be uh, cratering after it, it may have uh, gone through a period of hype there. I know this traded at $120 a share at some point in time, but uh, it's now become quite small. This isn't a company that we'd be interested in it at all until they can figure out how to get back to growing revenues. Now, next on our list is a firm called Accuray, uh, rather interesting company. You can see here the um, products and services that they offer, but look along the bottom there and you'll see their uh, gross profits declining over time. So that's uh, definitely a problem. Now, one thing to note here is that uh, they're involved in radio surgery, uh, which 
uh, utilizes radiation to treat tumors and other problems. It's not surgery in the traditional sense because there's no incision. However, this did make our list. They compete against leaders in this space, such as Varian, which is now part of Siemens. Uh, Varian and Electa have over 90% market share of new installations. So um, Acura isn't a company we'd ever be interested in because we only invest in leaders. They recently laid off nearly 6% of their workforce, presumably trying to deal with their uh, shrinking gross margins. That brings us to Globus Medical. This is an interesting company that... Uh, has two segments. The first is musco, musculoskeletal solutions. Uh, this is primarily implantable devices, biologics, accessories, and surgical instruments used in a variety of different procedures. Uh, the, the segment we're interested in is enabling technologies, uh, and they say here it's still in its infancy, infancy stage and consists primarily of imaging, navigation, and robotic systems. Uh, very attractive 74% gross margins across the board. So in this particular case, you can see that the segment we're interested in only makes up about 12% of revenues today. That needs to become more meaningful before we take a look at that. So whenever you're looking at a company involved in a particular technology niche, you want to see just how much exposure you're actually getting to what you want, in this case, uh, surgical robots. That brings us to Procept Biorobotics. Uh, their job is to trim enlarged prostates. They had negative operating cash flows over the past trailing 12 months uh, of about $109 million. Um, our piece here, you can read, that came out earlier this year. Uh, perhaps the biggest problem is the limited TAM. So we're questioning the $20 billion estimate that, that they give, and we've calculated that to be more along the lines of um, $1 to $5 billion. Uh, since that article, their simple valuation ratio uh, has fallen to just under 10, down from 15. Um, but when it comes to investing in surgical robots, we definitely choose our next company instead. This is Intuitive Surgical. So here you can see the ideal business model where they have uh, close to 80% of revenues recurring. Uh, they sell platforms in the United States and outside. So you can see a healthy geographic breakdown there. And when we look at their financials, uh, here's the income statement. You can see that uh, gross profit is quite high. So they have a 67% gross margin. That's what happens when you sell lots of consumables. They're also spending quite a bit on R&D to keep their leadership position, which is estimated to be around 80% of market share. Uh, they have $7.5 billion in cash so that they can continue using that to possibly grow uh, through acquisition, not just organically. And as the leader, that's very important. Now, when we look at the competition, it's quite interesting to see that analysts believe that uh, Intuitive Surgical's large market opportunity and pipeline will allow them to continue growing. So there's a concern we have about uh, just how much growth they have left and they say here that competitors such as Medtronic or Johnson & Johnson may take years to establish the basic ecosystem of products and services needed to win meaningful market share against Intuitive Surgical. They believe that uh, Intuitive is well positioned to meet long-term growth expectations and retain their market share. Now, when you look at companies like Johnson & Johnson, they're laying off people in their uh, surgical division. Medtronic has actually reorganized their own, and you see here that uh, the CFO at j, j says there's a sense of urgency at the company as it works to come from behind in the robotic surgery market. I've listed out some of the major players here, at least the larger medical device firms like Stryker, Medtronic, the market caps, you can uh, get an idea of how they compare when it comes to size. But if you're interested to know more about uh, whether or not there's growth left for surgical robotics, we just published this research piece, which dives deeply into that. So that would be um, a follow-up from this video. Now, just to conclude, we always invest in leaders. So we'd look at Intuitive Surgical as the best robotic surgery stock. They're the leader. Uh, we don't find any of the alternatives to be very compelling, though we are invested in Medtronic and Stryker for other reasons, dividend growth reasons. Uh, the global surgery opportunity represents lots of opportunities beyond just Da Vinci for Intuitive Surgical, and that's something we dabble in uh, with that research piece. So 
Um, I'm going to put up another video here that you might like. Before you watch that, please click the Nanalyze logo on the right. Subscribe to our channel. Support our work. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this today.